Alright, this is a, a Fidel TRM and I'm going to indicate, indicate a couple of vices in for today and just see how long it takes and, uh, and uh, give you a couple pointers about the way I do it. Put the indicator in. What I do is I'll center up best I can with the slots first and then snug down one corner. And go from there. When I snug that one corner, I know it's not going to move too much. So I'll work, to, work out towards the other corner. Okay. Zero. Well, that's not fair. That's too close. That's within one. We'll start over. Okay. That's out about 15 now. And we'll work back. I just looked out. We're down, 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 down. We're going down about uh, 15 thousandths. So what I do, I'll bump that back to zero. The other end is snug. Bump that back to zero, plus maybe an hour or two past zero. And come back. Head for the other end. Okay, that end, that's indicated, and it's uh, I'm run down here again. You can't see it, but that's within a half a thousand there. And what I'm going to do for extra, extra, extra for you. Is I'm going to indicate this vice in parallel with that vice. So what I do is uh, I have this phase two straight edge, and I'll stick it in this vice. Okay, stick it in this place, snug it, and then and we'll snug this place up on the straight edge. Come on down. Okay, we'll double check this one. This is about a half out. Head for the other vice. Look. I've got too much pressure on the indicator. So we'll back it away. So we got about 10 thou pressure on it. I'll head to the other side. Okay, and that is minus a half a thousand there. Minus a thousand there. We just bump it a little bit.
zero 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 well maybe I'm three quarters of that off but that's good enough for most work what I do I do a lot of long jobs like this and uh, side frames for locomotives just hang on a minute Like this, this one's been sitting around a while, but you can get the idea. If I'd set these a little bit further, I could have done milling here and here and put all the holes in one setup, but no problem at all. Or you can swap your vice, your jaws, put jaw here, a jaw here, jaw here, jaw here, and you can do pretty, pretty good size of plate jobs, plate work. You have to skim plates down flat or make some kind of job. And that's about so that took about two minutes for two vice jaws, two vices. Now this is a Fidel TRM full CNC, and uh, I've had it about uh, six years. I bought it on eBay from an outfit in California. I don't remember the name. I had it shipped east, but but she's done a lot of work for me. Here's some little, uh, these little cannonball molds. They're a little bit rusty. I did these on here. I've done uh, side rods for locomotives. Whatever. Um, that, that was quicker than I thought it would be. I also have this. This is a Bridgeport uh, Series 1. It's oldie. But I put a I got an extra stepper motor and I, I hooked it up to this rotary table. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. But uh, I'll get to it one of these days. I have a job I want to do for that. And the computer screen there. And, and down this other end, I can't hardly get through. This is the Bridgeport clone. It's Enco. I've had this since about 1992. So that's almost about 20 years and it's just never broke down once. They talk about ENCO being whatever they say, but it's been a good mill and it, uh, it's paid for itself. It fed the family for a good many years. And we have this, this is a Pratt & Whitney, it's a 16 by 54 engine lathe. Bought this at an auction about uh, 25 years ago. It's a heavy duty beast. Going to be doing some cutting on there later on. But not tonight. We have a little uh, Delta service grinder. And this is a Prototrack CNC lathe, which is not running tonight just because there's no work. Uh, we've never had a minute's trouble with this. The, the uh, Prototracks are great little machines and if you need to buy something, a motor or a board or whatever, they well, they don't sell boards, I don't think. But a motor's four, five, six hundred dollars. That, that's really a bargain for a machine tool, repairs. Now this thing is Fidel. I'm on the other side now. I had to put a power supply into it. And um, and a battery, and that's about it. The power supply was about $300 plus or minus, a couple bucks. And it's been a bargain. And we have this other Fidel over here. It's a VMC 15 that we run sometimes, full tool changer. The other one doesn't have a tool changer, but we'll have that run and do a little programming. And this is a slaughter, or a vertical shaper. And you're going to see this running someday. I'll get some work for it. And here's some of the stuff that I build. This is a 1 8 scale locomotive. There's another sitting right back there. You can only see the nose of it peeking out. 
well, here's a hot metal car that I bought, or was given to me actually, where I worked. The place went out of business, Copper's Company, and they knew I liked trains, so the production control guy said, hey, would you like that? So, okay, sure. So we take it and pull it around the track sometimes. And uh, here's a little traction engine I made in 1982. It's about a quarter scale. It's got 19 gears, including differential in there, all homemade on an Enco mill drill. This is made on an Enco mill drill and a 10 inch Logan lathe. Some of you guys have Logan 10 inch Logan lathes. I know I've seen them online. I have this online. If you poke around my site, you can find it. And this is a model of the Hustler HO locomotive which was rubber band drive. Of course this is this is gasoline powered. We take it down the park and we give the kids a ride sometimes. And the under the table you hear a phase converter running. But that's all I have right now. So uh, I'm gonna wrap it up and get back to you later.